to ensure that nothing would ever get in the way of his love for us and our love for him. So God, through this season, we notice and we watch and we wait and we anticipate him doing some great things because we're settling ourselves before we get out there in the messiness of life. And I was talking to Bill Trimble. He's doing retail right now. And he said, I said, so how is it? How is it out there? And the only word he could find and think of is the word messy. And so this is a time for us to slow down, breathe, and realize that God did, does, and will continue to show up. But we have to wait, and we have to watch. So I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we worship together this morning as our band leads us in our time of worship as we sing together uh, the songs of Lord, I Need You and Heart of Worship this morning. song to rise to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you oh Oh God, how 
this morning just a couple things I need to share with you this morning Uh, some concerns I'd like to share with you this morning Um, the prayer sheet that we have it's on our information table so if you want to pray for those that um, I mentioned as well as others uh, they're on that prayer sheet this morning and so let's remember uh, Norma Mormon who is uh, will have surgery scheduled to relieve pain in her leg on Friday, December 2nd, so we're asking you to pray for her. Also, uh, Jim uh, Tracy gave me permission to share with you that uh, he, after weeks and weeks and weeks of trying to figure out what's been going on with him physically, the doctor finally pinpointed what is happening. 
Uh, Jim has what they call large cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, this is going to sound kind of um, weird to say, but if you want a cancer that's treatable, that's the cancer you want. And so this is a very treatable form of cancer, uh, but he will have um, chemo, he will have radiation, so continue to uh, pray for him, continue to be present with him uh, during this time. Also, um, Alice Smith's uh, daughter-in-law, Aubrey, uh, Michael's uh, wife, uh, we're, it has, has a follow-up visit on Wednesday for the results of a colonoscopy, and so I'm asking you to pray for her as well, that they figure out exactly what's going on, and we pray for healing to happen. Um, also for uh, Chris Killingsworth, who's at home recuperating after foot surgery, uh, Chris wanted me to let you all know that if you have an opportunity, drop him a card, uh, drop him a call, uh, just check up on him. So I would also like to say thank you, congregation. I had a, a week packed with visiting folks and spending time with some of the folks that I got to spend time with, they told me that they've received cards and phone calls and offers for meals. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. Keep it up, continue to do what you're doing, and uh, we'll all be grateful for how the body of Christ, you all, do your thing in caring for one another. So let's pray together, let's pray. And so, God, here we are, God, with our heart, soul, and mind laid bare before you, God, and, and the transparency of what we like to think of worship, God, basically, and sharing with you, God, how much we do need you. And, God, that we need you for every day, that, God, we need you for every moment, that, God, we need you for the moments that, God, we can't quite figure out what to do next, that, God, we pray that we will realize how much we need you in every moment of every day, in the details of our lives. So, God, make us very aware, especially at this time of, of the season, God, where we begin to think about what we want to give and what we can give. And help remind us, God, that it all starts and begins and ends with you. So, God, fill us with your love. Fill us with your grace. Fill us with what we need for the journey that we're on. That, God, we may have, that, God, we pray for patience. We pray for compassion. We pray for sympathy. We pray for God how we are in the midst of what may seem and appear to be messy in the lives of others, in where we go out there in the different stores. That God, we would remember that God, you choose to be with us in those moments and that God, that we choose to be in other people's lives. So God, give us patience, compassion, and strength for each and every day. God, we do thank you, God, that you hear us when we pray. That God, you are very aware of our concerns and our needs within our hearts. As a congregation, but also for those outside of our congregation. And so, God, we pray for them this morning. We pray for healing to happen. We pray for strength to happen, for comfort and peace to happen. That, God, in the midst of, of struggling to surrender or that struggle to trust, that, God, you do, that you enable us to trust you with everything that is going on inside of our head and our hearts and our concerns for other people. So, God, this morning we pray for those that we have already mentioned and for those that we didn't mention this morning. We pray, God, for them by name in our heads and our hearts. That, God, you would overwhelm them, God, with all that they need and all that they will need in every part of their lives. So this morning, God, we, we give up everything that we may be feeling right now, everything that we may be experiencing right now, and we give that all to you, knowing, God, that you are greater, that, God, you are bigger, that, God, you more, you're more loving, and that, God, your spirit, your Holy Spirit, is waiting and is there to nurture us in these moments. 
So God, in all this, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and the one that, God, we pray to you for everything that we need. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Quick announcements before we take up our offering and we dismiss our kids for our Sunday school. So kids, if you are, if you, for Sunday school, all right, like are you waiting? Are you waiting? Yeah? Are you sure? All right. You should see the smile on this one. She's like, she's, she's, she's excited. Enthusiastic, she can't wait. So whoever's doing Sunday school this morning, I, I don't ever remember who's doing, oh, Mr. Pete. Mr. Ty. Mr. Ty's doing Sunday school. So kids, go ahead. <laughs> As they're leaving, a couple of quick announcements uh, before we take up our offering. Uh, please don't forget about our, ad, our Advent family activities this afternoon starting at 3.30. We have an opportunity for us to spend some time together, which I love, you know that. Making wreaths. The cost of those wreaths are six fifty. dollars uh, Make sure you bring your decorations. We're not providing that, we're providing the wreaths. Um, it's also a time for us to get together and just spend some time together around dinner. That meal will be also provided. You'll see uh, details about that. After, th during this whole thing. Now, if you're like me and you're like, I don't like wreaths. I, I like wreaths. I don't like decorating wreaths, but I like wreaths. You're like, what else can I do? I got a strong back. I got a weak mind. What can we do? Well, here's the thing. You can join me in picking up boxes and bring them up and putting them down up here. So we're going to decorate the church at that time as well, and uh, we look forward to doing that. And after all that, at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a meaningful, abbreviated worship time to initiate or to kick off our Advent celebration. So we're, I'm sorry, there's dinner. 
I did say that. Dinner before that, not dinner after that. So uh, we look forward to that. What, the dinner? The service is at 6? Sure. Whatever you think. We'll, just, we'll be here. It's all good. It's all good. Um, one, other, one other quick thing as well. For any other details about what's coming up, my administrative assistant, Karen, does a really good job in producing a bulletin every week. In there are announcements about the upcoming events coming into church. So um, come on over to today, 3.30, 4 o'clock. Be here. I'm going to be here at 3.30. Friskies will be here at 3.30, starting to do the wreath thing. Um, Shirley will be here at 3.30 as we start to decorate our church, get a good time together, spend some time together. We'll eat dinner together. We'll worship together. We'll all let, let that fall where it may, and we'll be grateful that we have an opportunity to be together again as a family. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to welcome our folks to come down in front at this time for our, our offering. Were you, were you cold? Were you cold this morning? Are you really? I'm sweating like a... Oh. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, guys, go ahead. So this morning's gospel lesson, that's good news according to, and then whoever wrote it. So it's good news according to Matthew. Matthew writes this to his community, and the community of people that he's writing this to are people under persecution, so they have a simple question. When's it all over? When are you coming back? How's this all going to play out? I find those questions addressed to the community. And Matthew, writing these words about conversations with Jesus, significant. Because we may be saying the same thing. When's this all over? How's it going to play out? And when are you coming back? See, when we go through these... Uh, Moments, whether it's personally, domestically, or even politically, we ask the hard questions about what, how, and when. Sometimes we find it a little awkward to bring up this scripture at the beginning of our Christmas season. But I think it's purposeful when we do this because it reminds us that despite the messiness that we may see in those around us, God is near. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 and 44, through 44, it says, Jesus is talking to his disciples, his students, and he said, However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. He's responding to questions about, Jesus, when are you coming back? When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the pl flood, people were enjoying banquets, parties, and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going, on, what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. 
That is why, or that is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken, and the other left. Now listen to verse 42. So you two must keep watch. For you don't know, ex- don't know what day your Lord is coming. Understand this, if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You also must be ready all the time. For the Son of Man will come when least expected. Whether it's a simple styrofoam circle with just a sprig of holly or a large ornate brass stand with tall strapping candles like this gentleman right here, congregations today are marking the four Sundays of Advent with the lighting of candles. So, just what does it all mean, you ask? Well, I'm going to tell you if you let me, I say. We're going to take a look at the Advent wreath on this episode of Chuck Knows Church. The season of Advent always includes the four Sundays before Christmas. It's a time of waiting as we prepare our hearts and lives for the coming of the Christ child. And using the Advent wreath and its candles is a way that many are celebrating Advent at church and in the home. Now, there are usually four purple or blue candles on a circular wreath showing the four weeks of Advent with a white candle right at the center called the Christ candle. Now, often families or members of the congregation help mark the four Sundays of Advent by lighting the candles. Look at that. You know, I remember my parents always let my older brother help light the candles, but uh, I never got the chance to. Might have had something to do with The Towering Inferno being my favorite movie. Anyway, on the first Sunday, lighting the first purple candle signifies hope, because Advent is a time of waiting and hoping. On the second Sunday, the first candle is relit, followed by a second purple candle, the candle of love. On the third Sunday of Advent, after the first two purple candles, the third candle lit is sometimes pink instead, signifying joy. And on the fourth Sunday, we light the candle of peace. Now, there can be scriptures or words spoken reflecting each of the Advent messages, you know, hope, love, joy, peace. Then, on Christmas Day, after the lighting of the four candles, the Christ candle in the center is finally lit, celebrating that the wait is over and the Christ child is born. And you know what? Sometimes just lighting the Christ candle without any words is more than enough. That's the Advent wreath. If you want to hear more about it, ask your pastor. Uh, Tell him Chuck sent you. Or get on YouTube like I did and look it up. (laughs) Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And over the next couple weeks, we're going to read through some of what Isaiah said about these moments and different actions that we need to take when it comes to what we see going on around us. So the series I'll be preaching over the next couple Sundays is get ready, get set, and then each week I'll fill in the blank. This week is watch. So Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, and it, this is a vision that Isaiah saw concerning Judah, the country of Judah, and its capital, Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of all. 
the most important place on earth. It will be raised above the other hills, and people from all over the world will stream there to worship. People from many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God. And there will be, and he will teach us, meaning God, there God will teach us his ways. And we will walk in his paths. Notice the part, the we part, is connected with the beginning of verse 3, meaning all nations will want and will eventually, with hope, walk in the ways of God. For the Lord's teaching will go out from Zion, His word will go out from Jerusalem. The Lord will mediate between nations and will settle international disputes. They will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer fight against nation, nor train for war anymore. Now, how will that happen? Verse 5 answers it. Come, descendants of Jacob, or come all of us, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. I asked uh, Steve if he would sing one of his songs this morning, and it it happens to be one of my favorite, one of my favorite songs that he sings. Um, So he'll sing for us one that he wrote. I'll be still. I know you are God. 